you to open up your hymnals to the opening hymn. Let us begin by singing hymn 507. Holy, holy, holy. Of God, 
God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The input this morning is Psalm 27, verses 1 through 9. We will pray Psalm 27, verses 1 through 9, responsibly, half verse, or half verse, and I will begin. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assault me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries are exposed. It is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though the war arise against me, yet I will. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inspire in his temple. For he will hide me in a shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high up on the mountain. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his dead sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. 
Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle read for us this morning, reported for us in the first chapter of Philippians, verses 12 to 14, and 19 to 30, starting with the 12th verse. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard. And to all the rest, that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers have become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment are much more bold to speak the word without fear. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means a fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you, or am absent, I may hear of you, that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation, and that from God. For it has been granted to you, and for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
him. Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when he became, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now, when those hired first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I gave to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first and the first last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thank you. 
Paid 
in my vineyard. We agree, one full day's work for one denarius. You put in one full day's work, you got your one denarius, everything is good, everything is right, everything is fair. And then the owner said to those I had first, and you guys have forgotten a couple of really important things. You have forgotten that I'm the owner of the vineyard, and the vineyard belongs to me. I call and I choose who I want to work in my vineyard. I decide who does what work, when, and where, and how. And you guys forget, this is my money we're talking about, and not yours. I decide how the money is spent, and not you. And would you begrudge me the generosity to pay everybody who worked this day one denarius? And the last became first, and the first became last. Now it comes down to you, and now it comes down to me. You and I are not the ones whom the Heavenly Father has called and chosen to work in his vineyard. Most, it happened for us, we came to faith, and most of us came to faith at the baptism of one. And for every Christian who has been called and chosen to work in the Father's vineyard, the pay and the wages are the same for each and every one. Be given and receive the gift of saving faith in Jesus the Lord and Savior and Redeemer. All is love and grace and mercy and peace that goes beyond all human understanding. All forgiveness of our sins and all the sins committed against us. A new man the desire to want to live a God-pleasing life. The promise of eternal salvation. Whether one has been a Christian for one second or one has been a Christian for a hundred years. It doesn't matter. The pay, the wages, all the same. Now it comes down to you and now it comes down to me. A lot of us have been working in the Father's vineyard ever since the baptism of Juan from the cradle and even are to this day. We have poured a lot of time and treasures and talents into working into the Father's vineyard. We have put a lot of hours into working a lot of blood, sweat, tears, and prayer. So lest we think too little of those like first, let us realize that sometimes we are just like them. Hey, been working a long time in the Father's vineyard here. Should get more pay and more wages than others who have worked in the Father's vineyard. Hey Lord, what about the corporate jet? Hey, Lord, what about the company limo? Hey, Lord, what about Pastor Rick's brand new fully loaded 2023 Lamborghini? Hey, Lord, what about all that? Because you and I have a sin flesh also, you and I are experts at murmuring and rumbling Sometimes we look at how the Father is watching over us and taking care of us and providing for us. We don't think that he's doing a good job at all. So we murmur, and we grumble, and we complain. We all fall short. We all have a simple flesh. So we look to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who does not fall short. For all the times you and I have murmured and grumbled and complained, He's the Lamb of God of the glory, uncomplaining. He too was called and chosen to work in the Father's vineyard, doing the most important job of all. He was called and chosen at the get-go, as he was begotten of the Holy Father in all eternity. To be the promised Messiah, the one who would do all the work required, for the complete and total forgiveness of our sins, and our complete and total salvation. To be the Redeemer, to be the one who would buy us back from being held in eternal bondage to sin and Satan and death by paying the redeeming price in full. For him 
conservatives may do have to buy that false gods. Love, grace, mercy, forgiveness, and salvation. So they have to roll their sleeves and tune up their Nikes and get to work. Because worshiping a false god always has a cost and always has a price. And they better do it and do it right because the blessings they receive in this life and even the next depend upon their work and the work they do for that God in their care. For us Christians, it's the exact opposite. 180 degrees different. The most important thing for us is the work done by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His perfect life, His death, His resurrection. He is the one who has done it all. To those who are worshiping the false gods of his life in this world, they, when they look at Jesus, consider his words. No greater love does one have for another than they lay down their life for them so they can live. And Jesus giving up all of his life and body and blood. God doing this for the servants. That is the dumbest. That is the stupidest. That is the most foolish thing they've ever heard. And so they reject it because it's the exact opposite of where they're at and where they're coming from. Yet for you and me, this is the wisdom of God. This is the, this is the gospel, the very foundation of our faith and our life and our salvation. This is why God says his thoughts and his ways are higher than man's thoughts and man's ways. He is God. We are man. Sometimes as you and I work in the vineyard of the Father, sometimes we find ourselves working in the most bizarre places, doing his work in the vineyard. This brings us to the epistle lesson for today. Here we find St. Paul, the blessed apostle, he was chosen and called by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus to be the instrument to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. And now he found himself, of all things, in jail, in chains. Well, that doesn't seem right. That sounds totally wrong, doesn't it? But it was right. Because St. Paul, the most apostle, served as a Jew. And now that he became a Christian and was proclaiming the gospel, the Jews wanted to kill him and assassinate him. So he was in prison under the guard of the Roman army. And while he was in prison, he continued to do the work that God had given him to do. He wrote the epistles and most of the books of the New Testament. He continued to proclaim the gospel so guards and their families could come to faith. So other prisoners could come to faith. And while he was in prison, while he was in chains, he had a roof over his head, he had clothes to wear, three square meals a day, and because he was a Roman citizen, he had an open door policy. Christians could come to him and talk with him and pray with him and encourage him and support him. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. He is God. We are men. Now it comes down to you and every one of me. The Apostle Paul held the location of being an apostle. Our God has called and chosen us to work in the Father's vineyard. He would have us work in the Father's vineyard by executing the duties and responsibilities of the vocation God has assigned to us. Christian pastor, Christian rancher, farmer, Christian doctor, nurse, Christian teacher, parent. He would have us work in his vineyard by executing the duties and responsibilities of the offices he has assigned to you and me. Christian husband, Christian wife, Christian father, Christian mother, Christian son, Christian daughter, 
the most highest office of all, being a Christian and executing the duties and responsibilities of that office. That brings us back to the intro of this morning, Psalm 27. And the psalmist tells us, I have only one desire, to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, and to behold his glory. So for you and me as Christians, it means remembering the Sabbath day and keeping it holy. What you are doing right here, being in the Lord's house on the Lord's day, so our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continue to work in the Father's kingdom and serve you. That's why it's called God's Deeds. That's why it's called the Divine Service. It's God's Divine Service to you, and it's God's Divine Service to me. He serves us as he enables us to have our sins forgiven through his holy absolution and holy communion. And as our sins are forgiven, to be completely and totally washed and cleansed and purified of all of our sins, with all the guilt and the shame, and all the sins committed against us, with all the suffering and pain. So you and I can be completely and totally regenerated, changed, transformed, made a new creation in Christ, in body, spirit, mind, and soul, so we are no longer conformed to the pattern of the fallen broken world, fulfilling Romans 12. This is the place to come so that you and I can prove sins can be completely and totally reconciled at peace with God, at peace with ourselves, at peace with our neighbor. This place can come so that as you and I partake and forgive us of sins, you and I can be completely and totally restored as full children of the Heavenly Father. It happens only one place, right here, in the Lord's house, on the Lord's day as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continues to do his work and to serve you and me. So too, as we are in the Lord's house on the Lord's day, in the midst of the divine service, we are permitted to come into the presence of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, to hear the old familiar voice and to hear the old familiar words. So you and I can be reminded there's lots of prisons in this life in this world. There's lots of ways to become entrapped and held in bondage. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ reminds us there is no prison with bars that are so thick and locks that are so strong they can hold our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ down. He was even there for the Apostle Paul as he was in jail and as he was reminds us as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he's the great chain breaker. Reminds us that when we feel weak, we are strong in Christ. Reminds us that for the times we are lost, we are found in Christ. Reminds us of his awesome words and promises for you and me as you and I continue to work in the Father's vineyard. He says, I promise you, I promise you I will never forsake you or forget you or abandon you. I promise I'll be with you even until the end of the age, all day and all the way. To listen to you when no one else will listen to you. To understand you when no one else understands you. To help you when there's no one else around. It is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who continues to serve us as he keeps his words and promises to take all that is bad in your life and my life and turn it into all that is good. That's what he does. He is the one who reminds you and me that you and I live in the final days here. When we look at our society, our culture, and our world, we see it upside down, inside out, and backwards. He reminds you and me that he is always our refuge. He is always a safe place to go. He is always a safe place to be. He reminds us that he is God. The one who created all the heavens and all the earth. And all that exists.
exists in the heavens and all that exists in the earth, all power and authority, and the heaven and the earth belongs to him. So here's our present help in all times of trouble. There's no problem too big to get on him. There's no problem too small. He's not concerned. He's the one who says to you and me, the time you feel all alone, you are mine. I called you. I chose you. I redeemed you. You are mine. Remind us that his thoughts and his ways are always higher than our thoughts and ways. This is your God and my God. The God you and I can always trust in. Always count on. Always depend upon. No matter what. Today, tomorrow, or all of eternity. In Jesus' name, Amen. And now the peace of God will pass on human understanding. May it bless you to keep the faithful life everlasting. Amen. And now I want to stand and sing for the great giving. <laughs> Thank you for blessing. 
year to make it fruitful, bringing forth in abundance whatever is needed for the support of our lives. Cross we employ you with the work of ranch and farmers, and grant us a proper weather of sunshine and rain. We know that a seed done, and a gathering of fruits of the earth, thus proclaiming your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O Lord, we could offer we pride, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord, may your kingdom be just and pride, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is now. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us continue by singing the Thanksgiving hymn. The first five verses. Yeah, my heart for we die. I'll have the power of Jesus' name.
The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give to you his 